This is Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Welcome to Street Knowledge. I am Chris Graham, and uh, one of the fun days on the podcast here for me, if I could call it a fun day, it's one of those realities of life, and podcasting allows you to do this a little bit, you know, okay? The, uh, the wife is downstairs. My wife is the state director of the Virginia chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. She's got a conference call, important conference call to go through, so leading some folks through some fundraisers that she's putting on later this fall. And, uh, well, what that means is, uh, you know, the we're at, we work out of a home office. We're very fortunate to be able to do so. Uh, the, the five dogs in our house are my responsibility right now. It's also podcast time. So if you hear barking, if you hear some growling, hopefully the dogs don't uh, chew on my podcast uh, microphone cord. Uh, and in fact, as I say that, one tried to do so. Uh, you know, ho- hopefully we'll get through this. This will be fun. Uh, and so, uh, looking forward to a good podcast today. We're going to talk, as the headline on the the uh, podcast uh, today indicated, we're going to talk about uh, some behind the scenes of what it's like to do a ESPN college football broadcast. You know, I've I've, I've talked about this um, with a couple of friends uh, who you know knew that I did my first college football game for ESPN. This past weekend, uh, the VMI Catawba game, uh, and uh, you know, told them all. You know, they had questions. I answered the questions. Told them about what the situation was like, what it was what the whole day was like, really, and and got the suggestion. Hey, that'd be a fun thing to tell people about on a podcast. I bet a lot of people want to know what it's like behind the scenes of an ESPN college football broadcast. Now, yeah, I'm not. I'm, I didn't do Oklahoma, Ohio State. Uh, you know, I'm not doing USC, Stanford. You know, I'm not doing games like that. I'm uh, VMI Catalba. It's a it's a college football game. It was a, a thrilling game actually. Catalba, Division two school, pulls off a 27-20 upset with a touchdown pass in the final minute of the game. Uh, and uh, so exciting game, uh, certainly for Wade Branner with the play-by-play, my uh, broadcast partner and I to to do for three hours plus on a Saturday afternoon. I mean, just Gosh, in, in in America, if you're a college football fan, there's nothing better than a Saturday afternoon at a stadium, right? You know, and so and for me, you know, I'm wearing a suit and tie and I'm sitting up in the box and best seat in the house and being able to tell people about it, that's even better than best. So, no, I'm not going to complain at all about anything, but I'm just telling you, yeah, I'm not doing uh, – I, I don't want to sell myself as being big time. I'm certainly not big time. I'm the opposite of big time. So there we go. But that said, you know, yeah, I'm, you know, for for a lot of y'all out there listening, uh, probably the only guy you know, in a sense, who's uh, you know been behind the scenes of a of a broadcast uh, as a, as one of the color commentators in a, in a sense for me, color commentator. So what is it like? What do you do? One of the questions I got asked was, what do you do to get ready? And I'll and I'll say honestly, what I do to get ready is watch a lot of football. So there you go. Right now, you're you're listening to this podcast. Step one, you've got that covered, right? You watch a lot of football. So I watch a lot of football. Uh, now, that includes, I mean, I watch as much on TV as I can because obviously that's the easiest way to watch football. Uh, even when I'm not doing a game broadcast, I'm trying to get out uh, and, and watch games live because there is a difference watching a game live and watching it on TV. And it's, you know, subtle but noticeable if you get if you get the live tv uh, the live game experience the live no tv experience um in a stadium especially for me luckily i get to sit in press boxes when i'm not doing a game uh for espn i am in a press box usually uh, uh you know covering uva football or some other college football and so you know tv is limited the camera can only show you so much right the camera can only follow generally follows the quarterback obviously that's where the ball is the, 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 the camera follows the ball but that's not where the play always is, and so, you know, sitting in the, in, a, in a press box, generally around the 50-yard line, elevated, just so, just perfectly, um, you know, you get to um, get to watch what you look, what what you really want to look for, and and often the, the the play is not where the ball is, the play is where the blocking is, uh, where. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you can see the development of a wide receiver screen before TV viewers would. Uh, you know, you can see how the defense is aligned. You can't always see that again on the screen on the TV because you know the the picture is usually pretty tightly packed. You get the offensive line. Maybe you can see the receivers flanking on either end. You see the running backs, 
and, and the defensive line and the linebackers, you're not always seeing, and usually you're not seeing the safeties and cornerbacks and where they're aligned. So, so you know, yeah, the, the first week uh, I, I was uh, uh, in, the, in the press box for UVA's, UVA's game with Wayman Mary. Uh, I was really testing myself as much as possible. Don't watch the ball. Watch, watch what else is going on. Um, maybe pick out a particular player where you think the ball might be, or a particular player or zone where you think the ball might be going on a run. Uh, again, watch that defense, see how they're aligned. Uh, now, where TV does help, and of course, again, you can only watch in person so much, right? Uh, you, you can only go to, I mean, generally, you, you're going to see one game on a Saturday. And so, uh, the rest of the week, you can watch as much, um, especially through the Watch ESPN app. Very helpful. Uh, there are uh, were 100 games, literally, 100, 100 zero, zero exactly games. Uh, broadcast last week by ESPN from from that Oklahoma Ohio State game all the way down to Mount Via Catawba and some other games involving one double A and, and, and Division two teams and so there's a chance to just you know just to turn on the game not necessarily have to watch all three hours of a particular game three hours plus of a particular game but when I'm watching I'm trying to watch with quality I'm trying to you know I'm not I'm not watching for enjoyment as much as I'm watching for analytics. I'm trying to, to, to guess along with situation down in distance. What play calls uh, do certain teams use? What looks lead to certain plays? What um, uh, what defensive uh, schemes work against certain sets um, and, and things of that nature? And so, you know, I can watch, for me at least, when I'm preparing, I can watch. Uh, in fact, I will watch several different games uh, on ESPN3, the Watch ESPN app. Uh, after a week's over, leading into the next week, to try to get a feel for just as much football as possible, right? So I can see, um, you know, see what other, t- what, what many teams are doing, what things work. The more football you see, the more uh, things are going to pop up in a game that you're then doing live. Um, that makes sense, you know. You've seen it before, so to speak. So there's a lot of, there is a lot of game study. Not necessarily involving just the teams you're watch, getting ready to call or, or watching that week either, uh, but but uh, across the board. So I try to do as much of that as I, as I can. And again, I'm sure you're sitting out there thinking, man, I am I could be good at this, you know? I could really be. I, I watch a lot of football. I love to watch football. So I, I mean, me too. This is what I've, uh, you know, I've done, I've I've done this kind of game prep as a journalist for a number of years, uh, and and now I'm getting to translate it right to a degree. Uh, with with my work with ESPN and ESPN3, so so that's leading up to a game. In fact, I, and I woke up Saturday morning. Uh, kickoff for our game, the VMI Catawba game, was a 1:30 kickoff. I woke up at six o'clock. Uh, uh, wanted to get my workout in for the day, so I got an hour and 15 minutes on the elliptical. And during that hour and 15 minutes, I was still watching more. In fact, I, I queued up uh, the first half of VMI's Week One game out at Air Force. Just to refresh myself with VMI's personnel, both offensively and defensively, uh, what they do schematically, both sides of the ball, and uh, that was not a good performance to say the least from VMI. They lost that game 62 to nothing. Didn't have the ability to watch anything from Catawba, being a Division II school. They weren't on TV the first week, uh, but then after after the workout was over, shower, getting ready for for the trip down to Lexington, about an hour long drive for me from Waynesboro, my home near Charlottesville. Uh, it was a chance. Uh, I, I, I took the chance to just refresh myself on Catawba, what they do uh, in terms of their personnel, um, reading as much about Catawba's program as I could. And um, and then I pop in the car and head down. So I got down early about 11 o'clock, again, about two and a half hours in this case before kickoff. And uh, the, the first thing we do at the stadium, of course, you're getting set up, you're, you're getting situated in your booth, not exciting stuff there, but our first responsibility, about an hour and a half before the game, roughly 12 o'clock for us before a, before a 1.30 kickoff, uh, our job is to uh, get together with uh, the producer uh, on site uh, and um, cameraman, and we do our, our what seems to be live open. It's actually taped about, a, about an hour and a half before the game. And uh, the preview that you see uh, where we talk about the key players from VMI, the key players from Catawba, and uh, Wade and I had worked out ahead of time what we wanted to say. There's no script, though. I mean, it's all 
it's all right off the top of the head. You know, you've you've done all this game prep already, so it's it should flow out naturally. Um, but I'll be honest, you know, I did a three and a half. It was roughly not quite three and a half hour, about three hour fifteen, three hour twenty minute broadcast uh, on Saturday, and that roughly ninety seconds was the only part that I worried about, just because it's the open, it's the first thing you see. You know, I took a I took a film class in college, and the uh, professor emphasized repeatedly in his lectures that the most important scene in any movie is the first scene. Uh, it sets the tone for the rest of the presentation. And so, yeah, that whole drive down, walking around the stadium leading to 12 o'clock when we're getting ready to do that uh, that uh, live-to-tape uh, open for the show, for the game. All I'm doing is thinking about those words. And uh, I bet Wade would say something similar. Uh, it's very important getting those, getting that right, you know, because that sets the tone then. sets your authority, I guess, for the rest of the broadcast. So... So after we did that, it's 12, roughly 12:15. You know, we did a couple of takes. Actually, actually, we, we did one take live on camera, and that was it. We did a, a, a cold take uh, as the the crew was setting up the shot uh, and and walked through it. And I even I thought we did a good job with that one too. And I said to Wade, "Man, I wish the camera was rolling there. We did, we got that one pretty good." Uh, anybody who's who's done anything like that, radio or TV wise, uh, you know that there oftentimes. Uh, the first time you go through something like that is the best time, uh, and and you don't want to jinx it afterwards. But it can be, it can you know, you can really lose your steam after after doing a good take and and have to do it a second time or, or a subsequent time. So yeah, after that though, twelve fifteen or so. I mean, we're gosh, we're just hanging out because at this point, you know, we've we've done what we need to do. The 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 the, the hard work then is being done by the production folks, and there's a lot of them: the camera people, the producer, the director. Um, people calling the shots, the graphics people. I mean, there's a whole team of people. You only hear Wade and I, and you know that there's cameras being operated by somebody, but there's a whole there's a whole room full of people. Even for, you know, quote-unquote just VMI Catawba, there's a whole, there's a whole room dedicated uh, to, uh, I mean, these huge TV screens in this room. There's, there's, well, there's equipment that I couldn't even imagine how it, how it works uh, in terms of, uh, you know, everything that goes on there. Um, one thing different, I've done ESPN College Baseball the last two springs, and we actually have the, it's a smaller room college baseball-wise, so the producer is actually in the room with us. And I can actually hear the producer calling his shots. I can hear him, you know, when a pitcher is uh, looking in for the sign. He'll, he'll say, okay, pitcher, camera one. All right, camera two, let's look at the base runner at first base. All right, let's go back to camera one. Okay, now now uh, center field, looking back at home plate. I mean, I can hear all that going on. And actually, as a broadcaster, that helps me because I know, and of course, I'm watching the TV screen too, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. But I can, I, not only can I see the TV screen, but I can hear what the producer wants uh, in terms of those shots. So I started, you know, a after a while of doing this, uh, we've done 20-plus games, college baseball games over the last two seasons. I really have a feel for where our producer is going with uh, with things. So, cue back to to Saturday college football. We're not in the same room with producer. Can't hear the shots being called. So, that's something I had to adjust to. But, um, I I uh, you know we we got to meet. We do have we did have uh, a, a person who was our spotter, a man named Randy. Didn't catch Randy's last name, but a, boy, what a nice guy. A guy who's been doing. Uh, a spotter's job for the spotter's job for about, I'd say back to the mid 1990s from what he told us. It's over 20 years, uh, and and Randy is uh, someone who says he's worked, boy, he's worked ESPN with with college football, college basketball. Uh, he's he's done NFL games, uh, done some high, broadcast of high school games that have been done uh, throughout the Mid Atlantic, and, and and has done so for a long time. So, so yeah, you know the the job of the spotter. Is uh is not kind of what you think. If you hear like you you, you know if you listen closely and, and to, to a lot of broadcasts, you'll hear the announcers from time to time reference their spotter, and you're thinking, and I thought this too because I just we, college baseball you don't need a spotter. Uh, uh, you can do every the the pace of the game is such that you can look up what you need to look up and you know, that kind of thing uh, on your own. But in, in a football game, remember, there's so much happening on the field that you need that extra set of eyes in, in the booth. But I always thought the spotter was the guy that probably sat there and called out the number. Hey, you know that was t uh, you know pass was 
to number 88 and the tackles made by number 53 and you know maybe threw the names out there to you as well and because it can you know again it happens so fast and you, the numbers in this day and age especially with all the different fonts that are used and everything else it can be quick it can be hard to quickly pick up on uh on who maybe you know maybe made a catch there's a pile of guys on top of that guy you know who got up with the ball was it 88 or 86 in a split second you want to make that call and obviously get it right but that's not what the spotter does. Our, our, it's, that's still our responsibility. The spotter, though, plays a, an even more invaluable role than I had assumed. Uh, his job back there is to – he's got – it looks like three or four big like three-ring binders full of information. He's, he's got, just like we've got, the stat broadcast uh, in-game stats that are updated not quite second to, uh, to second from the, the game action, but very close to that. You know, they're maybe five to seven seconds behind the game action uh, with, with updated live in-game stats, uh, box scores, etc. I mean, player-for-player player stats, except, you know, defensive stats, special team stats, offensive stats, everything. I mean, that's it's all there right in front of us. But also, you know, because we're watching the game and I'm in a lot – Wade's calling out the play, you know, after it's happened. He's telling you what it was. I am then – my job is to analyze the play. Their spotter's job is to, to, to hand us basically notes uh, of – you know, on this drive, uh, Daz Palmer has carried the ball four times for 16 yards. Uh, on this drive, uh, you know, the quarterback is four for six for 62 yards. I mean, whatever the stat may be, and he writes it down, hands a piece of paper to us. While we're talking, we're, we're getting, I mean, it's almost every play. There's sometimes two or three slips of paper going back and forth every play. Uh, as we're talking, uh, good thing there's not a camera on the booth. Uh, because uh, you'd, you'd see this this constant stream of of back and forth. Um, now I, I mentioned I would talk about watching the TV, and that's important. And I bring it up because uh, you know there was a a, a much t- written about, talked about debut for a prominent uh, former head coach Rex Ryan, uh, who debuted as a, uh, a a game analyst, color commentator on. The Monday Night Football broadcast. You know, this, the first week of the season, there's there's two Monday Night Football games, and so there's a second broadcast team. Uh, you know, the rest of the season, John Gruden is the color commentator, uh, and Mike Tirico is the is the play by play guy. And um, I say Mike Tirico. Mike Tirico was the play by play guy. I got that wrong now. Um, uh, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, guy, guy who's done a lot of uh, college basketball at UVA th- that I've actually had dinner with, and I'm blanking on his name right now. I can see his face. In any case, uh, uh, Rex Ryan debuts, uh, and uh, now he's going to work the rest of the season in ESPN, uh, the, the ESPN Game Day Studio, basically. And uh, Sean McDonough, gotcha. Thank you. I, I got that. Um, so, so, but Ryan's gonna work as a game, uh, as, as you know, on, on the on that desk basically with, with with that group of guys on game day, that you know, two hour pregame show on ESPN, uh, which you know y- you won't notice anything different there. That, that's that's your chance to, to offer opinions, uh, and theoretically, color commentator is also offering opinions. And so, why why is that any different, right? Well, the difference is. That uh, you know, you got to you got to form your opinions really quickly. Uh, there's a play clock in football, as you all know. Uh, you, the fans, can get frustrated by that 40 second play clock, but for us in the booth, that 40 second play clock is when we get to talk. And so, uh, and and for me as a color commentator, after Wade calls a play out, I've got to think. He's he it maybe takes him five to seven seconds as the play is going on to describe the play, get it out there. Uh, and then kind of kick to me for my job's a couple fold. It's to it's to tell you, um, you know, sort of go go further than Wade does into telling you what happened. The play by play guy does as to what happened, then maybe tell you why it happened that way, and then if I've got a little bit of sliver of time left, to maybe anticipate what the next play may be. So you've got to do that. I mean, how many plays is from scrimmage are in a game? I, I I didn't I don't have committed to memory. The number of plays that VMI and Catawba ran, but I do for some reason have the number of plays that UVA and Indiana ran on Saturday, the game the game later in the day on Saturday, and it was 162. And that does, that's plays from scrimmage. That doesn't include uh, kickoffs. That doesn't include punts. 
Uh, so, you know, you're roughly 170 plays in the game. That's 170 times that that you've got to go through and process what you've seen in a, just a few seconds and then make sense of it that many times. That's that's a that's a job. That is a I mean, you know, I was exhausted by the end of this day. Surprisingly so, I guess, but I was exhausted. I was mentally drained. I could barely drive myself home. I was so tired. So the criticism of Rex Ryan was, well, wow, he wasn't good at telling you what he thought. He was a former head coach. You think he'd be faster at that? Because of course coaches have to also process 170 plays a game, right? I mean, they you know, they've got to make decisions 170 times a game regarding what plays we run, or, or at least signing off on plays. The co- head coach doesn't call the plays often for teams, but uh, the, the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator do. The head coach, at least, is with them, theoretically simpatico, uh, on what those play calls are. Can't overrule them at any moment. So he's, you know, obviously the head coach has got to be in that decision-making process all those times as well. Uh, but I guess there's a difference between you know, saying it into a headset and saying it you know, on the sidelines and saying it into a headset in a booth and having it be entertaining. So um, my dogs are starting to uh, wonder about my soliloquies here. Uh, but uh, um, – and also a, a criticism was that Ryan seemed not to be able to keep up with the replays. And this is one where I'll tell you that's not as easy as you think. And here's why. The, fir- uh, the first – maybe couple, I think literally maybe the first one and a half baseball games that I did on ESPN two springs ago. Um, I was not good at replays either, uh, to put it bluntly. Uh, I had spent 20 years in press boxes watching games and not watching TV. I would, you know, you're, you're there at the game. You're there to watch the live game. And so all of a sudden there's a TV sitting right in front of you and yet your eyes tell you to your, your eyes and your instinct tell you to watch the actual game. And so I was missing replays all the time. And it was terrible. My job as color commentator is to, is to break down what happened and I'm not breaking down what happened at least for you the viewer. So uh, finally uh, at some point maybe between innings I'm trying to think. I mean obviously it was in the middle of the game but Wade said you got you got, you got to catch up on these 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 replays. And so what I've taught myself to do in baseball is actually when I'm at a baseball game, you're sitting in a press box right behind home plate, uh, at least at, at the college games I've done. You're not like at Nationals games where those guys are five stories up, literally. I'm sure they rely completely on the TV because the TV is a much better view than what they have in a stadium. But for me, even sitting just relative few feet behind home plate at a college press box, uh, I'm still watching the TV primarily because the TV gives me the view, especially of the strike zone. Uh, from behind the you know the center field camera, I can see the, I can see the ball breaking or not. I can see placement, location, uh, height, uh, width <laughs> of of a pitch. And so, the only time I really look at the field then is if a ball is put into play. My eyes can be faster than the camera can be, and certainly faster than the producer and, and, and the cameraman can be, in picking the ball up and being able to you know sense where things are going to happen and and then and then be able to call things from there. Football. Again, I, I talked earlier about how different it was in one sense. You know, football, you actually, uh, when you're in the stadium, you have an advantage uh, in that you can see much more of a, of a football play with 22 players in the field developing with your naked eye in an in a open-air stadium than you can on a TV screen where you, they can't possibly show you all 22 guys and have it mean anything. So, uh, But that said, I, I think that training in college baseball broadcasting helped me make the transition to college football broadcasting um, in the sense of knowing to look for the replay uh, and, and be able to talk through that replay. And, and sometimes, you know, I'll, because, again, we, we weren't in the same, same booth as the producer, sometimes I was a little ahead of the replay uh, in terms of my analysis because, you know, I'm, I'm just used to that, 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 that kind of tone and maybe the producer wanted to get a little bit more of a shot of players piling, getting off a pile or something like that, maybe show a coach. Uh, before they went to the replay, maybe it took time to queue up the replay. There is there is that element too. It's it's not as as, as automatic as you think either. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, it, my error would, would be I think you know going back, it, the only error I would have would be that I was maybe a little ahead of some replays, uh, not behind any. But th- I I don't fault Rex Ryan for that at all. That's not well, it's not his fault in the sense. I mean, maybe you know looking back, he the ESPN could have had him do. 
uh, either uh, a preseason game or two live or simply more of the training that I'm sure I would assume that they do um, at, at a place like ESPN where uh, he gets together with Beth Mowens, who was his broadcast partner for my night football this week. And they uh, stand in a booth and, and do a sample game together. Uh, and even that's hard to do, though. That's not. I don't know how good that. And I start thinking about that because I know that there are uh, there are broadcast teams that actually do that to get ready for a season. The one difference with that being you're watching a TV uh, the whole time. You're not watching. You know, your 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 eyes aren't darting from a TV screen to the to the field and back and forth all that time. Uh, but that said, you know, yeah, I can I can definitely understand why Ryan would have had that issue. So, uh, so yeah, we we the game starts. And here's I mentioned how how drained I was after probably 150 160 plays of a game. Uh, you know the the TV timeouts that you hated home those those long commercial breaks we love them in the booth, uh, but not just because we relax. In fact, we're not really relaxing during those TV timeouts those TV breaks. Uh, we are. Uh, we're talking. Uh, we do have a, a connection back to where the producer is. We're talking about what the the shot coming back from the commercial break is going to be. Uh, it's usually a replay of some sort. Uh, then Wade and I are preparing what we're going to be able to say from that replay, uh, and then set up the next play, whether it's a change of possession, maybe a timeout during the middle of a drive. So it's third and two to thirty. What are they going to do here? Um, but you're you're even even during that break, it's it's just a little bit a little bit of relaxation, but you're still on your game. Uh, the only break in the game is halftime, and we and we don't get at all the the same break that uh, you might get at home. You know, I don't know at home. You know, you might change, flip the channels. You might go out and take the dogs for a walk, like I probably need to do now. Uh, we get five minutes right at the start of halftime, but we come right back from the studio uh, at that five minute mark, and we're Right back on it, breaking down the game, what you saw at halftime, what adjustments might be made by the two teams heading out in the third quarter. Uh, and then it seems like it starts right back up. And um, then you, you, you go through, and, and I say this, I've, I've done radio football for, uh, for covering VMI football the last two years. That's how I got this gig, uh, doing this VMI game for ESPN. This past weekend, I'll do another game next weekend, uh, another VMI game on ESPN3 next weekend. It's, you know, the, the game time is consistent. Uh, kickoff at, at VMI games um, in Lexington is consistent. 1.30, 1.30 kickoff time. Actually, 1.34 uh, is the kickoff time. Once the game starts around 1.30, once your broadcast starts around 1.30, you're locked in until that game's over. There's, you know, I, I got to quickly run to the bathroom uh, at halftime. Uh, and other than that, for those three hours, 15, three hours, 20 minutes, it was football, and uh, that's the mentally draining part because you know you're you're uh, you're you're testing yourself every single play to get it right, uh, to, to 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 see the play, interpret the play, uh, and uh, and communicate what you think you know about the play, about the next play, about what it means for that game. You're doing that every play, and uh, and it's uh, it's it's a it's a fun thrill ride, I will say. You know, next weekend's game, uh, hopefully I'll be a little better. And who knows, maybe I'll do some more games this fall. I'm looking to, to talk my way into doing some college basketball this uh, this winter. I know I'll be doing some baseball again this spring. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And uh, uh, it's uh, something that uh, I've been working towards for a long time. And it's uh, really fascinating to you know, actually see it kind of come to fruition for me here, uh, I guess. And um, uh, and that said, uh, I have a great appreciation for, uh, even more so now, I think, for all the hard work that everybody behind the scenes of a TV broadcast does. Uh, our job might be among the easiest, and I'm not just saying that to – fluff up the the hard working tech people who do all the work you know the producers directors camera people graphics people etc but uh you know we do 
three we're we're on we're on point for three hours. And then we have that little that little segment at the beginning we tape before a game. Those guys show up. They're there when I get there, and they're and they're there when I leave. Uh, getting you know, getting set up for the game, getting all the cameras in position, uh, getting everybody acclimated, getting everything wired correctly. So, you know, I guess you could say, uh, and then uh, getting the graphics ready. I mean, I'll, you know, those graphics just don't automatically produce themselves. The the player names and numbers and hometowns and all that stuff that you see pop up during the game. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a it's like flying an airplane. I assume uh, I've, I've played uh, I've done that flight simulator game on a computer several times. Uh, it's it's uh, and, and, and flying an airplane with uh, you know everybody and, and, and maybe even refueling it in midair a couple times as well. Uh, and, and also the, makes it difficult as again. It's a, it's a sporting event, so who knows what's going to happen, right? So. Um, a lot of behind the scenes there. They're hopefully, hopefully, I'll give you some insight on in how it all works. Um, how it all works there is uh, I've been able to learn anyway, and hopefully continue to learn. Um, so it's uh, Wednesday as we're recording this podcast. I want to get together uh, with Scott German a little later this week, and we'll preview the UVA UConn game this weekend. That's where I'll be on Saturday, not doing any broadcasting this weekend, just just live blogging from the press box like I've always done. For many years, uh, from the press box at Scott Stadium for UVA home games, so that's a 12 o'clock kickoff on Saturday, and um, we'll be live blogging. Uh, I'll do a pre-game and post-game wrap uh, on Facebook, in addition to podcast. And uh, gosh, we'll have the game recap, the stats, the transcripts of the press conferences, my column columns explaining to you what happened in great detail and uh and then we're looking forward to i'm looking forward to next saturday saturday the 23rd uh, the uh, vmi will be hosting chattanooga preseason top 15 team in fcs football oh and two start a couple losses to fbs programs uh chattanooga taking the uh, hard route out uh to its two non-conference games early in the season uh but uh chattanooga of course now now behind the eight ball a bit there be in need of a win at VMI to continue a what will be expected playoff push for the box. So uh, that is uh, Saturday, September 23rd at 1.30. I'll be doing that broadcast. And, uh, boy, it's college football season. There's, there's a lot worse things in the world to be doing than talking about football, right, on a beautiful late summer, early fall day. Thank you for listening. We'll talk again soon.